Hello and welcome back to AP Psychology here on Educator.com. This time we're going to be taking a look at Social Psychology, the last unit, the last formal unit in the AP Psychology course. As we take a look at this, you'll notice that Social Psychology uh, has 8 to 10 percent. So this is a fairly substantial portion of the multiple choice in, in your uh, AP Psych multiple choice uh, uh, aspect of the test. So Social Psychology. So we're going to be looking at group dynamics, Attribution processes. How do we explain how we ourselves and other people, why do they do behavior? How do we explain that behavior? We're going to look at interpersonal perception, how we perceive each other, how we interpret each other's behaviors, conformity, compliance, and obedience, attitudes and attitude change. Oh, no, he didn't. Yes, I did. Organizational behavior, aggression and, <coughs> excuse me, antisocial behavior, and cultural influences. And so this part of the course is going to focus on how individuals relate to one another in social situations. And so social psychologists are going to study social attitudes, social influence, and other social phenomena. So we're going to have you know, 20 or 30 terms that start with social. And so you're going to learn to distinguish among these different terms. First is social psychology. And that's the scientific study of how we think about influence and relate to one another. There's social thinking, and literally this is the cognitive, the thought process aspect of group relationships, how we think about groups, and how we think when we are in groups, because those are actually two different things. Social influence is how being in groups affects us, how we conform, how we obey. Social relations, because you know that some groups get along with each other and other groups don't. We'll be taking a look at why that might be. So we'll look at prejudice, stereotyping, and discrimination in this unit. And of course, if we're going to deal with hate, we also have to deal with love and attraction and why people like each other, but also helping behaviors. Why do people sometimes help? Why do they sometimes not help? There are some circumstances that are very predictive, very um, uh, predictable in terms of why and when we will help versus when we won't help. Deception is huge in social psychology because when you know you're watched, you change your behavior. When you are aware that people are looking at exactly what you're doing, you tend to modify, you tend to tighten up, you tend to fix whatever your behavior is to whatever you think that other person might be looking for so that you have proper behavior. Well, social psychologists have gotten to be really creative with how they get around that. And the first way to do that is to lie to people as to why they are there. And so we're going to look at research studies where people are lied to. They think they're there for one thing, but they're really there for something else. And that way we can get a truer, more accurate reflection of what their real behaviors are and would be as opposed to uh, them trying to create a facade for the researcher. So we try to eliminate bias by lying to our subjects. Now, Avril Lavigne, if she had bothered to take psychology before she uh, dropped out of school and became a pop star, she would know why people make things complicated. So. To, I'm not going to sing Avril Lavigne. That's not. I, I won't torture you with that. But uh, but she becomes somebody else um, around everyone else. So the social situation, watching your back, like you can't relax. You're trying to be cool. You're trying to engage in what's called impression. Management. You look like a fool to me. Why do you have to go and make things so complicated? I like the way you're act I see the way you're acting around somebody else. It gets me frustrated. Then she goes into this next part. Honestly, promise me I'm never going to find you fake it. You come over unannounced, dressed up like you're something else. So you're a poser. Where you are and where you sat, you see, you're making me laugh out when you strike a pose. She's not talking about Madonna, strike a pose. Let's get to it. No, we're not talking about that. But she says, take off your preppy clothes. You're not fooling anyone because around other people, you're acting the fool. 
because she recognizes the behavior, but she doesn't know what it's called. Her presumably boyfriend here, or her male friend, is acting a certain way when certain people are around. And that's one of the things that you may have noticed. So when you are one-on-one -on -one with a friend, and guys are like this a lot, they can be pretty cool. But you put them around their friends, you know, around somebody else, around everyone else. We tend to pose and preen and act a particular way that we don't when we're not one-on-one. -on -one. So the situation modifies our behavior. And that's the very simple behavior. This is a very simple example of it. And Avril Lavigne captured it quite well in this song, Complicated. Now, if you love Avril Lavigne's song, then I may have ruined it for you or given you more insight. Or if you hate Avril Lavigne, you might say, why did you have to go and bring her up? Well, because I like Canada. 